So guys, welcome back. Next, we will going to understand the stack corruption. So stack corruption is a situation where we corrupt the stack data of a stack frame by copying the data more than the memory limits. So let us understand this with the help of an example. So let us suppose that you have a very simple program and in this program you have a main function which in turn invokes the function foo. And you can see that the argument that you are passing to this function is the argument which you pass as a command line argument. And you can see in this function, we are simply creating an array of size 12 bytes and we are copying the string which is passed as an argument to this array. So that's all. So now let us see that how this small piece of code can demonstrate the situation of stack corruption. So now if I ask you to draw the call stack of these two functions that is main and foo, then you should draw this diagram. So you have a stack frame of the main function. Following that, there is a stack frame of the function foo. And you can see that here is the argument that is pushed into the stack frame of the function foo followed by return address of the caller and the base pointer value of the caller function. Now again you don't need to understand what is base pointer we will shortly going to discuss this in detail and after that you have the local array which occupies 12 bytes in the stack frame. So notice the layout of an array in the stack frame. The index 0 element of the array will have the lowest address and the last element of the array will have the highest address in the stack memory. So since the size of the array is 12 bytes, so here the array will occupy 12 bytes of memory in the stack frame. Now suppose you invoke this function and you pass the command line argument the following string. Now you can notice that this string has 20 characters. It means that the size of this string is 20 bytes, right? So basically what you are doing that you are copying 20 bytes of a string in a 12 byte of buffer. And you are not even checking whether the buffer in which you are copying the string is sufficient enough to hold the string or not. So this is the snapshot of the stack memory when you have not yet copied the string to this buffer. right so this is before copy but the moment this instruction has executed and the string that you passed as an argument has been copied into this buffer then the stack frame would look something like this so you can see that the string gets copied in the stack memory as follows so you can see that the legal memory into which you were allowed to copy the string was only 12 bytes right because 12 byte was the size of the local array. But since you have copied 20 bytes of data, therefore you have copied 8 bytes extra. So basically by copying 8 bytes of data extra, you have corrupted the return address and the base pointer value which was stored in this stack frame. So these values will get corrupted. Corrupted means it is overwritten by the user data. Now remember that return address and the base pointer value is the information which is required by the caller function to resume its execution when the callee returns. But now since the callee itself has corrupted the return address and base pointer value of the caller, therefore when the callee function returns, caller would not know the return address and its base pointer value because they are overwritten by some junk or garbage. So it is for this reason that when the quality function returns, this program will crash. And now we know the reason that why this program crash. This program crash because we have corrupted the return address and the base pointer value which was stored in the quality's stack frame by copying larger string into a smaller buffer which could not accommodate that string size. So this is one example which illustrates that how stack can be corrupted and when stack gets corrupted then any undefined behavior can happen. <laughs>